Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us. Jesus, may you be magnified in the altar of our life. Oh God, whatever it takes to use us in the next few days, months, weeks, years, so that you be magnified and get all the glory. Jesus, forgive us for wanting it easy. Let us be challenged to seek peace among all men and holiness for without which no one may see the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Romans 12. Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship or reasonable service. So, the Lord was showing me. Proverbs 2 talks about the righteous inheriting the land. Matthew 5, the meek shall inherit the earth. But yet, if, if you are broken down, if you are oppressed, and you exercise meekness. Now, meekness, the word humble is the word in Hebrew, aniv, or anav. And it's a word of affliction. You're afflicted. You're afflicted by what? By, by what? By the things here of this world. We are afflicted by... Um, by the very things in life, just living is enough. You follow Christ, you have all of hell against you. Um, so we're going to inherit the land. What land is that? There's a song I came across. It's called Beulah Land, Beulah Land, Sweet Beulah Land. The word in Hebrew is Beulah. means married. It's not this land. This is not our home. It's the land where there's no more weeping, no more sorrow, no more death, no more election issues, no more COVID, no more can't get your kids to obey, no more or family members, even sadly our own children would say, I don't ever want to talk to you again, or even saying, you're dead to me, you're not my child anymore. No more of that. There's no more of that. In Hosea, or Isaiah, excuse me, it says that God will marry the land. I'm not a joke. <laughs> yes, Isaiah, you're named after the prophet. Um, so, that's the land, it's eternity. <laughs> Guys, this is um, this is not our home. No, no. You know, um, no. when Paul ta tells us, no. kids, hey kids, no. I don't want to sit here. you know when we uh, when our mommy and daddy tell us to do something, we don't want to do it, but we say yes because that's what God says. Did you know you are actually offering up your service? That's denying your flesh. That's exactly what Paul is getting at in Romans 12. This is a reasonable service. You know, we, we offered up our lives. We did the song, Christ Be Magnified. Um, and uh, in the altar of our life. Altars? Judah, what are altars for? Sacrificing. Sacrifice. Well, what does it mean, sacrifice? You got... What do you burn something up. You burn something up, okay? What do you burn up? Uh, what, what type of things do you burn up? Meat. Meat, okay. Bread. Bread, okay. Your, sometimes you can sacrifice your uh, will. Yep. Except it's not really... 
physical. In the Old Testament, what was it that you sacrificed? Sheep and cows and goats. Sheep, cows, goats. Okay. And no, you no, Nam. That, that was an unclean animal. No. So, now, did you get that sheep for free? No. No. What about that cow? No. Well, but what about the goat? No. No. Well, how much does it cost for a cow? Uh, Think a cow costs a lot of money? Maybe. Yeah. The point is it costs something. It costs something. Romans 12. What's holy and pleasing, and, and Paul's talking about it. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern, you may understand what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Guys, the transformation process of thinking in this world to thinking of eternity. Let's put it let's put it this way. It doesn't make sense. And when you choose things that don't make sense, you will get insulted. Think about your family. Look, how are you guys going to pay debt? Both of you guys need to work. I'll give an example. Because we, we heard it. You know, how can you have all those kids? How are you going to afford them? Look, you guys need to take care of yourselves. How are you going to be able to give to the children equally? Well, that's this world's thinking. We're told to be transformed. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more than, more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. I read the biography of the author who wrote Fair Sunshine, The Martyrs of uh, Scotland. And it was said of this author, if anybody wanted to condemn, criticize, he said, what good can you see with the person? And finally, one person told the guy, Jock Purvis, he said, you would see grace in the devil, Jock, because he was so gracious, he was so kind. And when you're, it starts off right here. When you are kind in your thinking of another person, you know, he is a, just a big baloney stick. Wait a minute. Is he or is he just struggling? Is there something good he can think about? Okay, let's not think too highly of ourselves. Now, as we have many parts in one body and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of another. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to the standard of one's faith. Listen, if, if, if God has called you to be a prophet, you better go in that training. And that means you may fall on your face. But you better go in faith. Remember, if you risk little, you gain little. If you risk a lot, you gain a lot. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid to exercise spiritual training that God has called you as a prophet. If service, in, ser in service. If teaching, in teaching. If exhorting, in exhortation. Giving with generosity. Leading with diligence. Showing mercy with cheerfulness. Love must be without hypocrisy. Detest or hate evil. Cling to what is good. Show family affection to one another with brotherly love. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack diligence. This is to the children that are listening. Do not lack diligence. Do not lack diligence. Diligence means you do it, we'd say in, in you know, uh, military, smartly, rightly, quickly, move it. Here to command, yes sir, go. Be fervent in spirit. That means with everything you got, like my dad said, do everything with pepper in your butt. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Now's the time to be patient in affliction. And be persistent in prayer. Don't give up prayer. Do not give up prayer. 
Look, the more you pray, the more you get afflicted. You keep praying because your soul depends on it. And you may not see it. You may not see it till eternity. But you will see the fruit of your prayers. It may be 20 years, 30 years, never. George Mueller, the father, our spiritual father, one who's known for his prayer life, saw visible answers to prayer, still had items that were not crossed off on his prayer list before he died. Or excuse me, after he died. You don't stop in prayer. What is prayer? It is that open communication with God, transparently, completely. Don't stop. Whether you pray in tongues, whether you pray with words, whether you pray with singing or weeping, but it's that open dialogue with the Lord, where your heart is always with the Lord. It's 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 that old hymn that sands of time are sinking. The bride eyes not her garment, but on her dear bridegroom's face. Is Jesus before your face? Share with the saints that are in their needs. Per, uh, pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Guys, we're being persecuted. There was a young lady fired by Starbucks because she refused to wear a gay pride sort of shirt rainbow she said i i will not they were handing out shirts <laughs> this is in the news it was it, she, she refused to she said I, I i'm a christian i will not condone this i don't agree with this this is against my my religious conviction my, my my faith conviction and they retaliated they said she won't take part in it so we fire her there's a lawsuit going on bless and do not curse pray for them we have people speaking against our current administration. Family members who speak negatively. People holding on to bitterness. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness should not be named among the Christian. Period. If you can't forgive, get on your face before God and say, Jesus, I don't know how to do this. I need to forgive. And you must Hold on to the, to the script. If you believe Jesus is your Lord, that same belief, you need to believe that he said forgive. Doesn't matter what wrong, it doesn't matter what they did. What matters is your position with the Lord. Because forgiveness is between you and the Lord having a short account, being a minister of reconciliation. If you're not a minister of reconciliation, you're not reflecting the character of God. Who reconciled his enemies, Romans 5. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, even if they're non-believers. If they're happy, rejoice with them. Be happy. It. Weep with those who weep. Be in agreement with one another. But do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. That means be willing to be afflicted and be among the afflicted. Do not, uh, uh, do not be wise in your own estimation. Look, you don't know it all. Guilty. Struggle with pride. The Lord is working in me. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Scripture says that. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Proverbs. Proverbs 2 says, Whatever you do, get wisdom. Judah, what is wisdom? Knowledge. What? Nope. The beginning of what is the beginning of wisdom? Proverbs one. Fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Get the fear of the Lord at all costs. That is what you ought to do. That is the beginning of wisdom. He says, get wisdom. Whatever you do, get wisdom. Get the fear of the Lord. That means. Say, Lord, bring me into your holy place and you need to be willing to pay the price and say, I don't care what it costs to me. Now, I'm not saying martyrdom. Could be. But let it break your mind. Let it break your heart. If you are to the point where you are under the weight of conviction, let it happen. 
because joy comes in that brokenness. Do not repay evil, anyone evil for evil. Try to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. You know, the big thing I hear is masks. You know what? Jesus says the sons are free. But yet so that we don't give offense. For their sake. Now, going political, I'm not going to go into that. Everything hinges on your face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord. If He tells you, you do it. If possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone. Not everyone may appreciate it or want to reconcile. Do your part. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. I'm going to sue him for everything he's worth. No, you won't. You need to seek the Lord what to do. Let him guide you. Instead, leave room. I love this translation. His wrath, for it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. What was God's injunction to Cain? Do not let sin conquer you. Conquer it with good. Abel had it right. By sacrifice. Which brings it back to Romans 12.1. Your life is a sacrifice. Your emotions, your will, your desires, whatever it be. Let it die. Let your heart die. This is not what I want. Let it die. I didn't ask for this. Let it die. Children of God. The Lord is patient with us. But the Lord does not tarry. He does not delay his anger. He loves. He would have it that none should perish. But everyone come to repentance. Folks, nobody is unsavable. There's some socialist agenda, demonic agenda, trying to destroy the fabric of this country. You know, and the people that, by whom it's coming, <clears throat> it's, uh, guys, listen, it's not unsavable. It's the, the, the people, the perpetrators, they're not unsavable. They still have God's breath in their lungs. It doesn't matter. They may not believe that, oh, that God breathed into me. It doesn't matter. What's, you know, truth is truth. They could still be saved. These are enemies of the cross. You need to pray for them. You need to weep for them. Nobody's weeping for them right now. It's our part as Christians to really pray for our enemies. Weep over them. Do you understand that Joe Biden may face hell? No. It's very sad, isn't it, Natanya? Yeah, so we need to pray for him. Do you understand that people like Adam Schiff, Representative Adam Schiff, uh, is vehemently against and, and has spoken all sorts of words against yeah. the, the ruling authority? You know, in Exodus it says, do not speak evil of the king, of, of the ruler. Nobody has the right. You know, Jesus says, if you speak words of hate, you've murdered them in your heart. Where's the respect? Not just, you know, you don't like people. Fine. Personality difference. No. What about just... Because a person's a human being, creating the image of God. You know, you're, you're, you're striking at God's image. Yeah. Thanks for the witness. 
We just listened to testimony by Nikki Cruz, a former gang leader. Now he's an evangelist. He's 80 years old. He, uh, sure, he, he did some really bad things. And uh, the Lord Jesus got a hold of him many years ago, 1958, 59, something like that. Nobody's unsavable. Nobody. The power of the cross is afforded to anyone who calls upon it for rescue. And not just the cross as an object, no. Everything that that represented, Jesus dying there, Romans 5 says we are reconciled by his death and we are saved by his life. Friends, you're, you're, you're going to be entering into serious disagreements with people. Some of them perhaps violent, you know, just with tensions. Don't give in to evil. Don't respond in kind. Ask the Lord how you ought to respond. I shared a story earlier about Ray Comfort, an evangelist in California. And he uh, is a short guy. And uh, there's a really big guy, like a linebacker type, kept bumping him, bumping him forward, bumping him forward, bumping him forward. He's, he said he was 20 feet away from his where he was first standing. And he said, Lord, wisdom. And then immediately thereafter, Ray said to the guy, look, you're going to hit me or hug me? The guy hugged him and walked away. The power of God. Yeah. Folks, our lives are as fragile as grass. Our lives are like a vapor. Whether you live or die, you're the Lord's. Yeah. Take a chance. Take a risk. Yeah. And exercise love. Yeah. And I'm not talking bubblegum candy and flowers. Do the thing you don't want to do. That you don't want to naturally do. Nobody wants to naturally reach out and shake the hand of somebody who just spat at you. It's not natural. That's the love of Jesus. We need more, more of his holiness. Once again... Be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. This is the working out of our salvation. Yeah. With fear and trembling yeah. in our hearts before God. This is it. When people are bad-mouthing one another and you don't join it. Say, so you know what? Let's, let's not talk like that. Let's move on. Yeah. Father in heaven, I thank you for the opportunity to deliver your message. Thank you, Jesus, for um, teaching us. Thank you, Jesus, for encouraging us to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for these messages that challenge us. Thank you that this is not our home. To Thank you that, Lord, I pray that we would be willing to risk everything to gain you. For we want nothing here, but that we would have everything of you knowing that this is not our land. Beulah land is where we are looking for. Where you are at the center. Being willing to forsake the difficulties here. Or, excuse me, to forsake the comforts here for the sake of the glory there. Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, grant us the strength and insight how to further go out how to further continue and not be lazy, whether it be obeying our parents, continuing in faith, faithful obedience day in, day out, or taking chances in big steps of faith because you said so. May we take those steps because you called. Jesus, may we do it for your glory, not because we want something in return, but because we love you. Not because we can get any more favor, because we have your very favor. But thank you, Jesus, for, for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I will say this. If, guys, if this, uh, if something in this message touched you, convicted you, get right with God. Guys, don't wait another moment. Oswald Chambers said, don't just do it presently, like saying, yeah, I'll get to it. No, you better do it now. Get right with Jesus. Get on your face and say, Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm doing something I'm not. I, I, I'm doing. I'm not doing something I should. And I'm doing something I shouldn't. Forgive me. Help me to turn. I love what Sid Roth said the other day. He said, this is my secret. He said, this is my secret to constantly being in the presence of God. Moment by moment, repentance. Daily repentance. Something pop up on my screen. Cl I close it down, you know, set like pornographic or whatnot. I close it down and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, I didn't ask for this. Forgive me. That's correct, being in that attitude of repentance. The Hebrew concept of Baal Teshuvah, a master of repentance. If you master anything in this world, it's being broken, saying, God, I'm sorry, I messed up. Be blessed, guys. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, check mark.